Final game of your SVL Week 10 Super Sunday, and we head to arguably the best stadium in the SFL. It's the Nemosphere in Seattle as the Nemesis look to continue their run into the playoffs there at five and four. They need more, and they will host the Jacksonville Kings on a losing slide that's lasted some weeks. Alongside with this evening to break down the action tonight uh, is, of course, the Hall of Famer, host of the Streets of Talking, among many other hats, Mr. Eddie Gage. Eddie, what's going on? SFL Nation, what up, do? Yes, we are indeed in the second best state in the SFL. Arizona being number one, of course, but enough. I digress. Look at these Seattle Nemesis uniforms. There, Jacob, those are looking sweet, but well, we got a great contest ahead of us. Many pick Jacksonville to lose this game, but I think they can stick to their run game, which they've been efficient at all season long, and uh, limit the mistakes of OJ Bruin. They got a shot at winning this game. Let's see how it turns out. Absolutely, should be a good contest. Justin Reside and Top Keeper on stats with us tonight. And without a doubt, Holy Truth has been in his bag recently with these uniforms. Last week with the black and teal look, this week with the uh, yellow grade. It's still some of our thunder over each other. Some of those look very clean. As they will receive the opening kickoff. Returned up past the 20 to the 25, spinning out of a tackle. Still going up past the far side. And eventually, Gus Scott is claimed at the 33. Nice kickoff return to start this game off. Fourth type attack in this offense. Check that easy money. John Fulton on the opening kick return for Seattle. And that's our type attack will lead out this nemesis offense. The back, Spalou, Scott, J.W. Doyle, and Dean Jackson. The receivers, Kenny Slider, Jr., Ryan Arlovsky, Gus Scott, John Fullerton, and Justice Blackwell. The tight ends, Van Harrison, Paulie Truth, the line, Will Stevens, Kobe Beef, Matty Mack, and Sean Sullivan. Offset eye to start here. Motion the fullback from side to side. Three wide. Four attack to throw to. Type attack drops back three. Rolls around the pocket. Jacksonville had pressure there. It won't get to him. And he rushes in himself. Picks up about three. I like the decision by Type Attack not to force a throw into heavy coverage. Elected to take off with it. He's got speed. But Jacksonville got the memo. And they had people spying on him. Ready to take him down. He's the best rusher in the league at his position. By some way, he can certainly take one off downfield. This is an actual run up the far side, and that's going to pick up three or four from Baloo Scott. And it breaks third and short. Pauly Truth did a great job getting pushed up front, knocking the defender back about three yards and allowing his tailback to pick up those few yards. And the Truth is in a rich vein of form at that tight end spot. There's two of them on the field here with Harrison on the right. Attack drops back. Short mm. throw outside. That's Truth. He picks up a first down and runs it out of bounds just past the halfway point. That was a nice route tree for Pauly Truth. Since his other tight end streaming up the field on the nine route, got to respect that. They took it away, and Pauly Truth just ran a quick three-yard out route, was wide open, convert the first down. Good early start here for the Nemesis offense on defense for the Kings. The line, take one hail, P. Fudor and Logan Gardner. The linebackers, John Martin, Dallas Knowles, John Patrick Levine, and Tigger Flay. The backs, K.O. Magic, Havo Ramsey, Bernard Gooden, Roy Towers, and the backs, Young Vot, Justin Andalus, Alex Bond, and Dylan Bantle. The early run from Baloo Scott picks up three. She's had two carries so far on this possession, second and seven. Great kick out block that time by Seattle, doing a great job of sitting the edge. I can't stop staring at these jerseys, Jacob. They are good, aren't they? They look really nice. Just past the halfway stripe here. Another ace formation for type attack. Short drop back, mm. short throw. That's too much coverage there on that play. That's going to be a free first a down. First down, but had he looked to his left, he had Pauly Truth wide open in the middle of the field. Would have been an easy completion for a first down. 
Absolutely, we'll get another look at that one there. And yeah, just disrupted the route a little too much on that occasion. Gives Seattle a free first down. And they can't afford to do too much of that tonight. Whether this offense doesn't need much support. Last week they put up 37 on the San Diego Mavericks on Monday Night Football. Split backfield for attack. Hand off up the middle. Blue Scott back to it that time. Was met with some good run coverage up the middle. Stops it right at the line of scrimmage. Good tackle by Tigger Clay. I know I keep saying it. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Pauly True did a nice job sitting in the edge. And had they bounced it outside to his right, he'd have picked up significant yardage. He's certainly getting a lot of room against this secondary at the moment. Patak, another short drop back, zips it downfield. That's caught for a first down by Gus Scott. Gus Scott came into this game four yards shy of 2,000 receiving yards for his career. Goes well over that. Congratulations, young man, on that achievement. He started his career in D.C. before joining Blue. Here, that uh, mother-son combination has been strong for the Nemesis over the last couple of seasons, especially. And now they're on the fringe of the red zone. Spread formation again for Seattle. Attack, toss play outside. That's blue and a good tackle. Set on the edge there. Made sure that won't go anywhere. Good tackle by Alex Bond. Great tackle by Alex Bond, but he got help from his teammates who helped slow him down and make it play possible. Second and nine, same package for type attack. Drops back this time, runs himself. There's the rushing game from type attack. The explosiveness straight out of the backfield picks up about 14 yards on that one. And now they're inside goal to go territory. He got from zero to 100 real quick like the young folks say these days. Saw there was no one open downfield, didn't force it, took off, and now it's first and goal. His ability to accelerate out of the pocket there. Super impressive. And now, well and truly knocking on the door. Split backfield. Jack set here for Seattle. Patak on a rollout. Zips it. Enzo. Truth the target. Couldn't reel it in. Good tip away. Coverage play made by Roy Towers. Roy Towers had a shot at picking that ball off. Had he turned his head around about a half second quicker. Perhaps he's still running towards the other end zone. May well have been. Bought a dodge there off an odd play call. Another heavy set here for Patak. He will pass again. Backfield throw. Found Scott dumped behind the line. Second good tackle from Alex Bond. He's had a couple of big plays on this drive. Jacksonville playing Ben, but don't break defense. They'd allowed him to get to the SFL red zone, but since then... This offense has been neutralized. Can they do it for one more down? I want to hold strong here for wide for the nemesis. Oh. Attack. Going to have a shot at it. Incomplete. Play made at the back of the end zone by Justin Andrews. Run. Dylan Bantzler and company. Uh, they I believe Polly dropped that. He did. He had opportunity oh, to bring that he in. Did. He dropped it. That's one he'll want back. Super talented tight end and probably one of three in the league that gets the usage that he does. And it's a nice stop for Jacksonville, who were otherwise tested and put under some pressure on that possession. As the kick sails up and through from Victor Iron Leg, and that caps off a lengthy Seattle opening drive. Victor Iron Leg formerly played for Jacksonville just a season ago. Out here showcasing his talents this season for Seattle. Former punter turned kicker, converts that one, and Seattle on the board first at home. Iron Leg back out there to. Send this one away. Turned up past the 25 to the 28, and that's where Jacksonville will take over. Quarterback OJ Bruin, the backs Sean Sanders and Shepard Vicarian, 
the receivers, King Alexander, Joe Beasley, Kingston Ellington, and the elite Connor Weston, the tight ends, Jim Copeland Jr. and Dot Williams, the line, Bryce Randall, uh, Brennan Ryan, Marcella Martin, and Carly Forge. Three wide to start off with for Bruin. Toss play outside. Mm. That will pick up two. It's an opening carry for Shepard Bakarian. Brian James taking one for the team. He slowed him down, but he got knocked backwards about three yards in the process. And you mentioned these backs, this backfield, a really good split. Hopefully Jackson will can really set it up on the road here tonight. Bruin will throw on this second play. That's incomplete. Zipped it in the direction of Connor Weston and couldn't find him. Yeah, it looked like he might have turned his head around. It's a bit too late. Unable to locate the football and bring it in. Quarterback and receiver not quite on the same page on that occasion. Now Bruin will go five wide with an empty backfield. Motion. One of his wideouts from one side to the other. That's King Alexander. Bruin drops back short throw outside. Caught first down. Nicely worked play to Jim Copeland Jr. Taking what the defense gives you, Jim Copeland Jr. catches that pass about two yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Turns around, is nimble enough to get upfield and pick up the first down. That's Did only well his 16th to... catch of the season. Yeah, this Jacksonville unit doesn't utilize the inside uh, of their receivers too much. It's been the kind of Western show as per usual this season. Heavy box here for the nemesis and the carry from Vakarian up the middle picks up five. And this right here, the success or lack thereof of Jacksonville's run game is going to, in my mind, predicate what happens to them today. If they can keep the ball rolling on the ground, they got a good shot at winning this game. Certainly there is two backs to make up a really nice dynamic. That handoff up the middle, Vakarian. Probably unlucky to have already got three on that one. Sets him up with a third and short. Back to back carries by Vakarian. Got a tight end in the backfield blocking for him. They have done that a heap with Harrison and Paulie Truth this season, such as the case here on this play. And off though, that's mm. the first for Sanders, and he's met at the line. Great work coming off the edge for Matthias Citrion, and that ends the drive in its tracks. He's able to get around the block of Dot Williams, who was trying to set him up, but uh, got over there just a bit too late. He's going to force a punt. So an early punt for Jacksonville from the boot of Liam Price. Who will send this as far as he can. The bounce needs to be good, and it is. It's going to be sent out of bounds at the five. So Seattle will be marched all the way back. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sidelines and start your play today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career, or just meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. Nemesis taking over here at the six. Hand off up the middle. Blue Scott. Mm. Scott trying to get free. Almost broke loose of that final tackle. Alex Bond again there to save the day. That was an important run for Seattle because they do not want to be forced to punt this ball deep out of their own end zone and giving Jacksonville a good field position. It's a good start. That gets them away from the end zone. Opens the playbook here on second and four. Attack, short handoff. That's swarmed by Jacksonville defenders and eventually dropped by Taquan Hale after a game of three. Seattle have fullback Dean Jackson lined up on the line as a tight end to serve as an additional blocker. And they're really smart with their rotations, Seattle. They have players where they need to be. Third and two. 
Another running look. Jacksonville got to plug the middle. It's gone up the middle to Baloo Scott, and Scott will pick up a first down. Did the job. Did the job. Scott picks up that first down. And like we said a moment ago, gets him out of that precarious situation of punting deep out of their own end. Baloo's had a good start to the night tonight. Three wide. Now for Patak, opens the playbook up on first down. He will drop back, good protection on both sides of the edge. Mm. Patak's gonna rush himself, beat one tackle and slid. Realized he was running straight at one of the Jacksonville linebackers <laughs> in John Martin and yeah. said, no, I want none of that. Yeah, we saw a quarterback this weekend get injured while attempting to slide, mm -hmm. never return to the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Indeed. And Vancouver had problems with that as well. And in the last game that I watched with Christian Brown, that handoff on the far side to Baloo Scott gets them closer to first down territory. Baloo Scott getting involved quite a bit here early on in this game. Expected potentially another carry for he here, but it's Dean Jackson who's in the back. For check that it's JW Doyle, Doyle yeah. the second tailback. And the big unit trying to rumble through, and oh, he, oh, well, that was a questionable spot, Andy. John Martin got there. They're going to give Doyle the first down momentarily. No challenge from Jacksonville. No challenge, but I thought he was about a, maybe six inches short of that first down. Perhaps the ball got there in the end. Irrespective, fresh set of downs here for the nemesis. Mm. Blue Scott, great read, pushing off the edge. And she still got back to about one yard shy of the line of scrimmage, but a good play from Jacksonville's defense. Yeah, Alex Bond located Baloo and just dragged him down from behind. Baloo never saw him coming. He's had a really good start of the game, Alex Bond. Veteran strong safety, Patak mm. short throw outside. Pressure got there and Doyle makes the play and picks up six. That was a great decision by Ty Patak. As you're right, the blitz was coming. Ty felt it and got it out to his heart read and picked up five yards. Makes the down a more medium situation here. Twins to Patak's right. Paulie Truth subbed in at the left. Split backfield. The handoff will go to Blue. Mm. Scott, great read. Up the middle. John Patrick Levine said, I want none of that. And gets a nice play, and that forces Seattle to punt. Trying to catch Jacksonville's defense napping, ex expecting a pass, but read his key, stay home, saw the offensive lineman pushing off the line and stepped up and made the play. David Rush to send this one away. Jacksonville's defense gets the hole it needed. It's a booming punt. Feel it at the 15. Boy, did he get some breeze behind that. That finishes the opening term here in the Nemosphere. Three to nothing. Seattle leads Jacksonville possession when we come back. That was a very fast quarter. Absolutely. We're back here after a rapid opening term. Jacksonville with possession in hand now. OJ Bruin set up at the 15. Vakarian and the backfield to start. Twins to his right. That will go up the middle. Shepard Vakarian, look out. Good tackle. Lamar Bryant Jr. saves the day, but it's an early 15 yard pickup for Vakarian. If you're going to play a 3-4 defense, you got to get push up front from your nose tackle. Sean Parent, who serves as a defensive tackle also, not quite used to playing that nose position, although they have let them use a 3-4 defense quite a bit this season. But if they're going to have success running that, getting that run game going or stopping the run, he's going to have to get in the weight room. Vakari made the most of that, and that gives Jacksonville some better field position here at the 30. Toss play outside. That's mm. Sean Sanders. Good read. All Great. over that one. Shared the block. Found his target. Squared his shoulders. Made the tackle. Doesn't get any better than that. 
Sabo Kanan's first tackle of the game. Means that that run from Sanders only picked up two. Bruin to the air, oh. tipped away. Oh, Doug Day, he will want that one back. OJ Bruin hit the panic button at, on that time. Saw the blitz coming and just got rid of it, made a bad decision, and he is lucky to still have an opportunity to pick up this first down. It was Brian James in the area as well, prevented that one from going anywhere, and now Bruin has to have a shot here from third and eight. Four wide in the gun. He's got Vakarian to his right. Alexander motioned. Bruin drops back. Pressure got there, but it's mm. incomplete. Look deep for Connor Weston. And it's batted away. Good coverage play made by Daniel Valentine. And that stops it in its tracks again. That was great offense, but just better defense. As that time, OJ Bruin set his feet and put out a good effort to complete the pass. But unfortunately, the defense made a great break on the ball. Second punt of the game for Jacksonville. The fielder, the, not a lot of coverage there, and eventually gets there. It means that the returner in John Fulton had some room to move, but gets up to the 28, and that's where Seattle will take over. And any no need to hit the panic button earlier for Seattle just yet. They they looked good on the opening position, couldn't quite execute in the red zone. They also have the lead now here at home with the ball. No reason to panic at all. Three wide for attack here. Sent a couple of rushes early. One of which set them up for that touchdown score. A oh, field goal, rather, I should say. Not quite there. Toss play outside. Blue Scott fended off one and took... The secondary for a ride there. Justin Andalou is had to hang on for dear life, and Scott picks up six. That was all Balou Scott as the fullback missed the block, and Balou had to pick up about four of those yards on his own. Going to a heavy set here. Split backfield, J Jack's look. Jackson will put pressure on the outside. Attack short throw. We've seen that read. before, and that was read better that time. From Young Vought on the outside. Young Vought, the four-season veteran, seen this movie before. Saw the back on out to the flat. Knew he had safety help behind him. Excuse me, cornerback help behind him. Steps up and makes the play. Here's Seattle now have to convert on third down again. Patak drops back. Same play. Same result. Jacksonville pushes up and gets the play made. And once again in coverage. It's been a good start to the game for that man, Tigger Clay, and means that another Seattle drive is stuffed. Three and out, and usually those kind of adjustments come in the second half, but Jacksonville stepping up here early. So once again, David Wrench to send this one away. Fielded at the 20 and dumped at the 23. So... Again, Jacksonville takes over. Our offense has kind of come in their fits and spurts, but it sort of feels like it's all, you know, almost getting there where they want it to be. Bakari looked good on the last possession, but it stifled out right when it started to look good. And they keep momentum going this time. Three wide. Seattle drops their corners right back. Bruin Look is going to throw, he lost it. Lyman had to go back and pick it up, take it forward. No, he's going to lose nine after that one. OJ Bruin made an absolute meal out of that. Yes, and let's see if they elect to challenge this play because he was in a throwing motion. Just not sure if his arm got forward. Let's get another look at it, Jacob. There was no challenge flag immediately from Frank Gordon. He got absolutely yeah. whacked. Never had a chance. Oh. As soon as the H and want... height came out of his mouth, they were already after me. There's a the challenge flag. There you go. You said it, that there was a solid chance that we would see a challenge on that plate. And we'll take a retroactive look at this play. Get your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus at GoRetroid.com. Play the only video game with your player in it. 
Oh my goodness, he got belted. On that replay, I don't know. I, I don't think he got his arm moving forward. I think that's play gonna stand. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. So he's on that side now. So the nine yard loss is negated and it will be a second and ten. It definitely was a type attack, certainly doesn't think so. But OJ Bruin gets away with one there. He did. Type attack. At the very least it wasn't the he wasn't the fumble that they lost. Attack played for Seattle, of course he thinks it went that way. <laughs> Here comes the blitz. Yeah, pressure on the inside there of an otherwise three-man front. Bruins got time to throw though. Mm. Zips it outside. That's gonna pick up eight. Finds Connor Weston for the first time tonight. Great decision by OJ. Connor just runs a square route, a seven route they call it. Hot read for his quarterback when they bring in a blitz. Sets up third and short. Makes life a bit easier here on third and short. Carrying in three. the backfield. Mm -hmm. Look Both at that. Safety. Front. Wow. And linebacker are coming on the blitz. With a cover three behind it. Got to get rid of it. Oh, they Motion. run it. Vakarian, no. They ran straight into the fire. And Stein, Aaron Stein is all over that one. OJ has got to recognize that at the line of scrimmage and call an audible. They run a force fire three where they got defenders coming off both edges. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You got to audible that into a passing situation. Falls away and he motioned a receiver over, so you would have thought that that was the objective there. Not necessarily that every motion is, a re is an audible, but man, you feel that they could have done better in that situation. Yeah, you got to pass or run it up the A gap. Hope you can hit a quick hitter. I had a receiver out there along with two star tight ends and didn't take it up. And now Seattle trying to get some momentum of their own. It's been a not as comfortable a night as Type Tack would be used to. Very conservative approach from this Nemesis offense thus far. The tackle drop back on a first down. Rolls out a touch. Inside pass is caught by Gus Scott. And that's, as we say that, a first down grab. First down grab. The fans are happy. Getting excited as their offense looking to try to figure things out. Top attack by some time. Runs out of the pocket, but does not take off. Bind his receiver's time. Hits his man. It's a first down. And... It's the first time we've really seen a deep pass across the middle for some time. And again, Gus Scott found with good yardage attached. Attack on a first down. Hand off to Doyle on the outside. Doyle beats the first defender and eventually Young Vot pushed across. That's a really good tackle. Really good tackle for a safety. He ran up there and made that play. Both he and... Alex Bond have been making some really big plays on defense so far for the Kings. Free wire for Patak. He'll roll out. The pressure got around the block, but Patak, cool as you like, sends it down to plus the 35 to easy money. John Fullerton. John Fullerton on a reception. You see a lot of teams around the SFL. Dallas play up. Getting that quarterback out in space. You got two receivers running toward the edges. Another receiver running like a skinny post. Hard to defend. Well, the Jacksonville Rushers got around the block to try and get to type attack on that occasion, but the route developed enough for him to throw it into the window. And he hit it. And now Seattle are on the move. Fresh set of downs. But attack out. drops back. Pressure again. That time it got a little too close for type attack comfort. And he had to throw it away. Jacksonville brought pressure. Ty did not sense it. He was lucky to get that ball off in time to avoid the sack. How about this, Eddie? Is it just me? 
Or do these particular commentators sound like they should be doing work for the European League of Football? Is that a knock <laughs> at my accent? Because if so, you're in the wrong continent. Uh, three wide for Seattle on first down. Good blocking on the edge. Oh. Why is it outside? Malou Scott is absolutely whacked behind the line of scrimmage. Good defense again on the outside from Jacksonville. Jacksonville <laughs> continues to play those short routes out on the edge outside the numbers. And you just wonder if Seattle has something dialed up to take advantage of that. Five wide on third down. Aggressive look from Seattle. Empty backfield, four per attack. We'll see the motion to cross. In Ryan Arlovsky. Patak short throw. Caught. Six yard pickup. Not quite enough for a first down. Roy Towers on the tackle. And that stops another Seattle drive. Not enough for a first down. However, it's going to give them enough yards to set up a field goal attempt here. So Victor Ryan leg for attempt number two in the game. is up and good got the legs on that one and means that seattle kicks their margin out to six points up by six however jacksonville got to feel pretty confident about their defense thus far today now if their offense can step up and puts up points before the half they're in prime position to make some noise here in the second half kick off from iron leg Fielded in the back of the end zone, not returned, and we'll get an update from Los Angeles at San Diego. Thank you, Jacob. Wild sequence here at the end of the first half in San Diego. LA's up one. Pickler's pass is picked off by Ryan Yosef, who takes it 102 yards to the house. Then San Diego fumbles the ensuing kickoff to give LA a field goal before the break. 17-6 Lycans, despite 250 yards of offense for the Mavs in the first half. Back to you in Seattle. Wow. Pressure Look out. to Jacksonville. Oh, good pressure. Vakarian broke another tackle. Shepard Vakarian and eventually is forced out of bounds after a pickup of eight. How about that, Eddie, in LA San Diego? Just to rub salt into your wounds. Ryan Yosef returns an interception, 100 plus yards for a pick six, and then says, I'm going to retire at the end of the season just to, you know, make <laughs> you feel better about yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. But. Jacksonville sticking to the script we talked about pregame, getting their running game involved and taking a ball out of O.J. Bruins' hands so much so he doesn't feel the pressure of having to win this game by himself. Vakarian has looked strong early in this game. Sanders is in the backfield by this time. He gets the carry outside, trying to get past Matthias Citron. Can't beat him, but gets a first down. That time, Williams redeemed himself with a great block on the edge to allow Jacksonville to pick up their first down. Just like that, Jacksonville's on the move here. Pro set for the Kings. Another 4-3 look here from Seattle. Hmm. Motion Copeland Jr. out to the side. Interesting call, but it will be a run nonetheless. And Victorian trying to force his way through. And a great defensive effort to push up and make the play. Keeps that one at bay. Second down 10 at the gain of nothing. 240 left in this first half. TJ Frosty on that play. Now Jacksonville pushes out to an ace formation. Two to the top of the screen. Here's a throw for Bruin. Oh. Finds it downfield. Great grab in double coverage. That gets it up to halfway. And Connor Weston's got his second. Great pickup. Connor Weston, not so much luck early on in terms of bringing in receptions versus targets. But this time he's able to hang on to the ball despite the heavy traffic. Weston is the key target for this Kings offense as the clock rolls down 15 seconds before the two-minute warning. Again, another play prior to that, you would imagine. From halfway, Bruin outside, Vakarian trying to get room off the toss and a great 
Scamper across the front line from TJ Frosty. Make sure it only picks up four, and that brings us to the two-minute warning. Seattle leads at home six points to nothing. It's a conservative game here in the Nemispheres. Jacksonville driving to get some points on the board before the half's out. On the plus side of the 50. All three timeouts. Score here for Jacksonville could be huge. Their defense has hung well in this game so far. Handoff, Sanders, oh, short block. side, Vakarin rather. And again, Shepard Vakarin gets great service on that early side and picks up another first down. The only thing I like to see Vakarin do there is get out of bounds and preserve this clock. That's under two minutes left. I don't think it's an issue, but you just never know should they get any tackles for loss and things of that nature, but great job bouncing outside. I don't think there's a great deal of urgency here. You've still got three nah. timeouts left. Yeah. 40 left. I've set eye now for Bruin. 37 to go to the house. Fullback motioned in, then we'll go back mm. to block to late handoff, and there's the tackle for loss you talked about. Yep. Aaron Stein again. And that time, OJ towed on Seattle's defense when he put the tight end in motion, but no doing. Single back triple formation here. Bruin to drop back. Sends it oh. downfield. Copeland Jr. broke a tackle and gets it just shy of the 10. Jim Copeland Jr.'s agent must have heard us talking about him only having 15 receptions coming to this game. Picks up his second. None bigger than that one. Wow, what a throw by OJ. 29 through the air from OJ to Copeland. And now they're in the red zone. Free wide here for Bruin. He's going to kill some time here by motioning Weston over. Although they did call timeouts. The clock is officially stopped here. Bruin drops back. He's got a receiver running outside. Oh, great contact on Joe Beasley from Amar Bryant Jr. Amar Bryant Jr. one of the most sought-after free agents prior to signing with Seattle. Shows why right there that Arizona was highly seeking his services. He made a great break on the ball. Kings will go back to this triple formation that they set found Copeland Jr. in earlier. Perhaps that's the formula for success at the moment. Seattle loads some coverage on that short side. That motion one of the receivers over the cross. Bruin short drop. Good block. Mm -hmm. Oh, almost picked off by TJ Frosty. That was close. It should have been picked off. He had both hands on the ball, saw it the whole way. Just looking at OJ's eyes, followed the receiver, located the ball, and did everything but pick it up. Big play coming up here. Four wide for the Nemesis. Could be a huge moment in the game. They need 12 to the house. 10 for a first down. Lift up the strong side. Look out. Bruin. Picked. End zone. Bright Jr. trying to go back the other way. And he's going to be spotted at the seven. That's not the way that Jacksonville wanted that drive to end. You're absolutely right. And unfortunately for O.J. Bruin, the turnover problems continues as it's been a problem for him all season long. He hit the panic button, recognized the blitz coming. They've been blitzing out of that set all game long. And it's perhaps it's something type of tax saw on film that he just does not handle the pressure well. And sure enough, turnover for Jacksonville and a prime opportunity wasted. Here we go again. Three wide for the Nemesis. Split backfield. Fullerton in motion, top to bottom. Patak drops back. Oh, Patak sacked. Got away wow. from it. What a play. Type attack found Gus Scott for a huge play. How did he get out of that? I'm not sure. I thought he was being tackled to the ground the way I saw it from our vantage point, but 
He somehow did not skip leg day, stayed on his feet, and completes a great pass to Gus Scott, who's been having a great first half. Wow, wow, wow. It's unbelievable from type attack. Drops back again. First down mm. for... Oh, Truth drops that one. Good play by Tigger Clay in coverage. Great Rachel, that Tigger. didn't go anywhere. I just cannot stop looking at these Seattle uniforms. One of the best I've seen this season. Mm. They are quality. Last week's was good, but these might have topped it. Attack on a drive now. Trying to correct that last error offensively. How aggressive will they get with 20 seconds on the clock? Attack rolls out, checked himself. Downfield, oh, poorly truth. Almost had a deep one, but it's incomplete. Incomplete, and Paulie had a mismatch size-wise on a defender. He's got to post him up almost like a basketball move, locate the football, and use his body as a shield between him and the ball and make that catch. Third and 10 here, decision time for Seattle. Empty back for interesting formation here, Eddie, from Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. One on one, look on empty. Call it truth again. He's in there on that short side of the field. Drops back here. Patak rolls out. Patak trying to buy time. Type Patak. Leashes downfield. What a throw. Found Gus Scott again. One and a half for Gus. I have a feeling that Gus Scott is going to be the player of the game during the halftime selection show. He's having himself an awesome first half. He's had the lion's share of Type Patak's targets. And that will finish the second quarter halftime here in the Nemosphere. Jacksonville shut out in the opening half, but they're only down by six. It's a defensive game. The Kings are right in it. Eddie Gage, your thoughts on that half we just witnessed? They are right in it. Their defense is coming to play. Their running game has come to play. But unfortunately, some of the, the, the decisions made by OJ Bruin has them shut out here in this first half. Should he clean up those mistakes? They have a chance to be winning this game. They were in prime position to go ahead with a go-ahead touchdown in this first half. But all season, you know, the turnover bug has just been his nemesis, so to speak. 13 interceptions coming to this game. That one right before the half made 14. But if he can clean up his act, his defense and his running game is giving him a shot to win this game. He just got to get focused. And a shot at the red zone late in the half that resulted in an interception by Marbury Jr. And there you go, Eddie, you called it. Gus Scott, your player of the half. Five catches for nearly a quarter century in yardage. He had an impressive outing in that opening quarter. And here we go. Second half about to get underway here at the Nemosphere. Seattle leads at six points to nothing. Can Jacksonville forge a comeback? Or Seattle keep playing their game and take home a win to push them to six and four. This stadium is very dark. I wonder if that's by design. I'm trying to intimidate their opponent. It is, and it's an indoor stadium with not a lot of, not a whole lot of natural lighting at nine o'clock at night, Eastern time. As the return up the middle by Kingston Ellington who hasn't been sighted yet in the receiving game, which is odd. No. He has fielded at the 25. Veteran for Jacksonville has been here about as long as anybody yet to have his name called. Six seasons he's been here. Four, four Absolutely. Defense. There is that four, four, We've seen that quite a bit tonight. I pro here for Jacksonville. Copeland motion from right to left. Bruin under center. Hand off straight up the middle. And Vakarian got rocked by Aaron Good and right at the line to gain. So they put the tight end in motion, trying to slow down that pass rush that they were showing, but had zero effect on his defense from four.
Offset eye, three wide here for Jacksonville. Bruin drops back. Bruin with plenty mm. of time. Dips oh. it down, but great grab. Wow. Plucked it out of thin air, Connor Weston. I'm calling it now. That is a retroactive active catch of the game. OJ had a defender in his face, jumps up to take away the passing lane, but Connor Weston was not deterred. Comes up with a great catch in traffic. I think so as well. That's the nice hands catch of the game. Brought to you by Retro. Put a Retro pen held in your hands and play the only game, video game with your player in it. SFL 4K23. Brian, oh. another one! Ellington right on cue up to the oh. post. Can move on, Frosty. Frosty got back there at the 10, but what a play from Kingston Ellington. Jacksonville is folding at the end of the season, and OJ Bruins are looking for another home. Perhaps he's starting to get his resume out there to show teams that, hey, he can play in this league. He just needs to be coached up a bit more. Great throw, despite the pressure that Seattle has been putting in his face all game long tonight. He said they needed, he needed to correct his losses from the first half. They have come alive to open this half up. 90 seconds gone, and they're already in the red zone after a huge play from Kingston Ellington. Look out. Bruin fumble. This time it got there, and he lost it. And it's picked up at the back of the play. Looked like uh, Brian James may have got there, but the fumble will be credited to Sabo Cannon. Seattle is number one in the SFL in sacks. Coming into this game, they had 22 and a half. They bring it, it seems like, every down tonight. That trend has continued, and O.J. Bruin has to keep his head in a swivel, but that's not his fault. He was under pressure the moment the H and height came out of his mouth. It may have been Matthias Citriot that got the recovery, but Sabo Cannon jarred it free on the sack. Oh, Gus Scott! It's... Oh, that... It's yeah. cool, a fumble on field, but no, you, no. We, we all thought the same thing at the same time. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's I don't think challenge. either foot hit the ground. That's going to be rude and incomplete pass to Seattle. Decide to challenge this. Yeah, look at that. He oh. never even got a foot on the ground. That's going to be overturned for sure. He respected He got rocked. He Man. did. Waiting for type attacks. Flag, there it is. There it is. And we'll take a retroactive look at this play. Put a retro pocket three plus in your hands and get your SFL console at goretroid.com. Now, I met Type Attack at the convention last, last year, and he was a rather slim young man. But looking at him on the sidelines as the head coach, it looks like he put on about 40 pounds since then. I think it's stress. <laughs> it's stress from coaching. I can believe. I can relate exactly. to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they do overturn it. Not shocked at all. Sometimes those can be 50-50, but I think we saw that right away. Saw yeah. straight through that call on field. And possession will remain in the hands of the home side. Second and 10, though, was a good play on pass defense to jar the ball free. It's Patak now. Offset eye. Twins to his left. Free man at the bottom. Hand off though goes to Baloo Scott and Scott only picks up three so another good response from the Jacksonville defense. Trying to get off the field. Third down and long coming up. Seattle's, excuse me, Jacksonville's defense needs to make a stand here. Empty backfield. Truth again on the left. Patak, four wide. Drops back. Coverage was good. Patak threw it. Oh, oh no. It was picked up. I wonder, did he pick that off? It's called a fumble in midair, but I don't know if it hit the ground, Eddie. It did not hit the ground. That's going to be an, an, an rude an interception by the time it's all said and done as Paulie tried to bring it in. Oh, You're Roy, right. that was incredible from incredible Alex play. Bond. That <laughs> might be one of the best defensive plays you'll see all season. Someone clipped that and sent it to his agent. 
Roy Towers stuck with the play for as long as he could, jarred the ball free of the receiver's hands, and Alex Bond caught it at his ankles to pick the ball off. This game has come alive in the third quarter. What a start the proceedings here in the Nemesphere. Jacksonville back in possession. Three wide to start for Bruin. Toss play outside. Shepard Vakarian mowed over one defender in James, but gets four of them as a result. And Shepard is going to need an ice bath after this game because they're going to have to rely on him heavily between now and the end of this game till they come back and win it. Jacksonville looked really good on that last possession. Just all fell apart with a turnover from OJ Bruin. Now they go back oh. to the ground. This time it's Sean Sanders beat one, but James wasn't being beaten again. And it's going to be a third and short. Daniel Valentine, a cornerback on that play. A little light in a tushy. Six feet, 200 pounds. And he was reminded that he's a mouse in the house out there compared to the rest of these defenders. There you go again. Vicar in Dot Williams in the fullback spot, the lead blocker. What has Frank Gooden got here? Up the middle, short throw. Vakarian bruising run, picks up a first down, ran straight at Doug Day and got the job done. Love the decision, and Seattle showed that they were going to blitz again, but this time they paid attention, learned from their mistakes, and ran right up the A-gap to pick up their first down. So that was the sort of things they weren't doing in the first half that they've corrected to this point in the second. Fresh set of downs here. Copeland moved across. Bruin, heavy set here from Seattle defensively. Mm. Toss play outside. Oh. Sean Sanders is met well by TJ Frosty. And that time, the tight end did a great job again of blocking for his teammate. But Dot Williams did all the work, but unfortunately, he did not bounce it outside. It's going to be a gain of one. Off center light for Bruin again. He's going to move a receiver down in motion. Joe Beasley from side to side. Toss play. Again, Vicarium one-on-one with the defender. This time, Seattle responds well and drops him after a gain of only two. Third down and seven. OJ has to be careful with the football here. They are outside of field goal range. You don't necessarily need to pick up the first down, but if you can pick up about five yards, you give yourself a, a great chance to kick a field goal. At the very least, need a score up. Bruin, deep look. Oh, there's a flag. Pass interference. It was too much on defense from Seattle secondary. And that's going to stay as a... Golden opportunity now for Seattle, for Jacksonville in the opinion side of the 10. I'm not sure if this ball was even catchable. Let's get another look at that. Oh, it was. I'm sorry. I'll take that back. But, wow, that's, that was a bang, bang play. These referees got to let them play. Yeah, that was six and a half dozen the other that time. Kingston Ellington, the target. He is being very involved in this second half after we sort of noted that he wasn't in the first half. Bruin now, goal to go. First no. down throw, it's picked. The worst possible outcome. And Amar Bryant Jr. has got a brace. And that's unfortunate because Amar Bryant did a great job of taking away the inside. He basically felt the receiver's shoulder and just ran the route alongside. Let's look at this on replay. This is an excellent job of playing a corner. Locate the receiver, turn around, find a football, make a play. Took away his inside shoulder, negated him as an opportunity. He should have went elsewhere, O.J. Bruin. And, wow, another red zone interception. That's got to be demoralizing. It's the second time that ABJ has done that tonight. And now Seattle gets to take over from their 20. Five and a half left in the third. Hand off at the middle. Baloo Scott, again, tough defense from Patrick Levine. Means that Scott only gets three. Only picks up three yards. This Jacksonville defense, they're playing inspired football tonight. See there, Ready, the team stats relatively close. It's just yeah. the turnovers that have plagued the Kings tonight. 
Handoff, middle, Doyle. Doyle trying to get free. JW Doyle. That is a grown man's run. Picks yes, up the is. first down. He's running a bit hard to my liking. You want to lower yourself and, you know, make yourself not so much of a big of a target and while also protecting your body. But he's a fullback, so I guess he's accustomed to the contact. Absolutely. And that gives Seattle a new set of downs here. Three wide to start off with for the Nemesis. Scott in motion. Rather, Fullerton moves into the slot. No one picks him up as of yet. Patak drops back. Mm. Oh, through hands. Bond over jumped it. That could have been a pick. Looking for Arlovsky and had the safety. Like, you're right. Been paying attention to the football. That would have been an inception. He just didn't read it there. Alex Bond could have come away with a pick of his own. Patak's got to settle it down a little bit. Second and ten, they're at the 36. Hand off, mm. short side, Baloo Scott, great tackle. Young Vot again, strong at the line. They've been playing aggressive. Seattle's defenders have all night long, whether it's the, the run or defending the pass out to the short flat. They've been making a, pres a name for themselves throughout this game. Four wide here for Patak. On third down and ten. Drops back. Pressure around the edge. Didn't mm. get to it. It's tipped away, though. Good response from the Jacksonville defense once again, and they hang strong. This defense can easily hang their heads and just admit defeat after their offense has continually turned the ball over. But they have continued to step up, answer the bell, and give their offense yet another opportunity to take the lead. You get the sense that OJ Bruin isn't going to have many more chances here. The way that this defense is playing, you wonder how long, much longer they can hold strong. It's a relatively young unit as well. As that punt is returned up past the 30, and we'll get a game update from San Diego. Thank you, Jacob. This game is totally turned on its head because of one Hunter McWaffle. His season uh, high in rushing yards in a game was 60. This run goes for 50. He has 155 yards in the game, the fourth best rushing performance of any back in the SFL this season. And San Diego's up 27-17 with seven to go. Back to you in Seattle. Hand off out the middle, Vakarian, as this one continues to be relatively conservative and very defensive-minded uh, football that you would certainly, you and I certainly enjoy. Eddie Absolutely. has no doubt about it. Jacksonville looking to get down there again and hopefully get con a conversion. That run, though, from Sanders isn't going to help. That's dumped beyond the line of scrimmage by Sabo Cannon. Not going to help at all as the center, Cardi Forge, bounced it too far outside. Got to turn up field. Third down and eight. Listen to this crowd. Defense the chant from the Nemesis supporter base. Bruin drops mm. back. Incomplete. Too much coverage around Weston. And it's tipped away by Sammy Seatbelt. Not sure what OJ saw there because kind of Weston was never open. That ball should have been thrown elsewhere. Dodge the bullet yet again. Check that, Ricky Robinson, the corner on the tip there. Third season in the league, his first with the Nemesis. Former Scorpion. Mm-hmm. As that punt sails away, and another Jacksonville drive is stifled. And Fullerton on returning duties gets it up to the 25. And you see there, both of these units have struggled on third down tonight. Seattle more so than Jacksonville even. It's been the story of the game. It has. Two and a half left here in the third quarter. The first half flew by in this third quarter. So it's taken quite some time. Game has a way of balancing itself it. out. Absolutely. There's been some turnovers in this quarter. A lot more possessions. And... 
As a result, we've been here for a little bit longer. Patak, short throw outside. Mm. Balu Scott got past one. Just stepped out of bounds, though. Really? Patrick Levine did enough. I think his left toe was out of bounds. His left pinky. Only just. It was enough to stop it there and picks up again a three. See attack again. Oh, said I. Twins to his left. Doyle in the backfield. Patak drops back. This one's going downfield. Pauly Truth flips the field. Been a while since we called Pauly's name. I think he ran a nine right straight up the field. Great throw by Ty. Just knew where he was, and it was a mismatch downfield defensively. Big tight end against a much smaller safety, and he is going to win that nine times out of ten. And twice on game day. Mm hmm. Handoff. Mm. With a little reverse run there for Blue. Scott picks up three. Three yard run here by Seattle. Looking to make this a two-score lead, which if they're able to accomplish, it's going to seem like a three-score lead the way this game has gone. Jacksonville's defense has held strong up to this point, but it's starting to break just a touch on this possession. Doyle in the backfield here. Hand off up the middle. He's going to pick up a couple. Tackle made there by Young Vot, who's They've done everything he can tonight. He and the rest of this defensive backfield. Third down and five. He's going to be someone to pay attention to in the offseason. Could be a really important piece to a secondary on a new team. But Tack drops back. Pressure all around him. He waits. Oh. Incomplete, though. It was in the hands of Brian Arlovsky, and it just got jarred free. The ball was thrown just a little bit too hard for Ryan, but that's a pass he's got to bring in. Gonna force Jacksonville's another defense punt. gets another stop, and it's hung on once more. Yeah, but this time they got to go the length of the field. They're going to score. Kind of wants a favorable bounce, yet caught at the 15. That is going to mean that they need about 85 yards to take this all the way down. Although, granted, at minimum, a field goal would feel accomplishment here. Given yes. the way that they've gone, they've been in the red zone a couple of times, turned it over. Field goal at least halves the margin here. Big drive needed from Vakarian particularly. Split receivers here. Vakarian runs up the middle, is plugged. That's not what they wanted. And it's a great tackle made by Aaron Gooden. That's a bad sign when your running game, which has been a driving force for you, gets a yard on first down. Shepard Vakarian's at 60 off 15 tonight. Split back. Uh, Split receivers here on this play. Sanders trying to get room. Sanders won't get anything. He's met basically just a yard past the line of scrimmage. Bright James in on the tackle. They've ran that toss a few times tonight, but just not have had much success out of it. Third down to seven. We get the playoff before the quarter ends. Bruin has to convert here. He will play. Bruin downfield, mm. too big. Overthrew his target. Connor Weston was open, but he couldn't find him. And that stifles another Jacksonville drive. Yeah, we didn't have the best angle on that, but I think the receivers either run into each other or they got bumped off their route. Another three and out. That's four straight punts in a row now. Yeah, it, the game has certainly hit a lull once again for both offenses. That's another huge yeah. kick. Still, though, Seattle are going to start off at the 45, and that's where we'll hit 
the end of the third quarter. One to go here in the Nemesphere. Seattle look at the close this one out and head to a six win record. We'll be right back after station identification. But to four's up. Station of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. Here we go. Game winding down here in the Nemosphere. Seattle looking to put it away potentially on this drive. They've got 55 to go to the house. Attack on a first down. Zips it across the middle. That's caught. Look out. Downfield run. Jump Fullerton. Picks up a good chunky yardage. And that's going to set them up inside the 30. Great pair protection by the Seattle offensive line as Jacksonville was bringing heat. Gave Ty plenty of time to find his receiver. Go again. Now they're well and truly on the move. Scott in the backfield. 35 to go now. They've made 20 out of one play. Patak drops back. Oh. oh, he couldn't hang on to that one. There was tons of coverage around the area already, and it was a bit too much. Yeah, but that's Paulie's second drop today, and that's unlike him, the leading receiver of this team. Mm hmm. Leading receiver on the team, arguably the third highest in the tight end receiving yards behind just James Matthew Jr. and Lauren Pococo, who we saw eclipse 100 yards again earlier tonight. He himself is close to 100 tonight as well. Mm. That's picked! Huge play for Jacksonville! There's a flag down. I think there it's going to be a... Bit after the play, it should yeah, be... Yeah, face mask. Seattle. Yes, that's going to be against Seattle. And that time, Ty was under duress and threw a bad ball. So Roy Towers, who's had a good night tonight, he's going to get a pick. Some might say that should have been pass interference as he got held up a bit there at the end of the route. Either way, Jacksonville have taken over now. And now, could that be the momentum turner? I still have a ways to go to the house, but that could get the traveling side moving. They needed some inspiration and they just got it. Pro set to start off with for Bruin. Toss play outside. Shepard Vicarian mm. trying to get through a ton of traffic and eventually TJ Frosty whacks him right in the rib cage after he had a three. I don't know. TJ Frosty was on the wrong end of that and he got baptized. But thank God he got teammates who got his back. Need more than that from Vakarin. He's had some really good touches tonight, but he's gone cold in the second half. Bruin going to throw. Zips it. That's caught. Did really well. Hang on to that one. Connor Weston. That's good for a first down. Yeah, OJ got that ball out a bit later than he wanted to because of the pass rush that continues to be sent his way. But this time he keeps his head up, finds his receiver, and makes an accurate throw. Now they've got a fresh set of downs at the 40. Starting to fall into place here. They've got that force fire look once again. Yep. Here he comes. Hand off straight up the middle. They responded, but this time Seattle... All over that one, Aaron Gooden has had a really good night in run coverage. Yeah, that time the defensive line pinched down inside and left him nowhere to go. Three wide here, another aggressive box here from Seattle. Four foot, four four look defensively. Hand off of the middle of Sanders is met at the line again. Dug down the tackle. <laughs> Third down and 10 upcoming. You have to remain aggressive if, if you are Jacksonville because you just don't know how many more attempts you're going to get with just under eight minutes left. But OJ's got to be careful with the football here. Jacksonville will be three, and not, three of nine from third down tonight. They need a fourth conversion here. Bruin rolls out. Mm. Bruin tried to rush it. Took too long. And a sack made by Ricky Robinson. 
Great coverage downfield. There was nowhere to go. And even he, if he clears the offensive line, I don't think he's going to have time to pick up the first down as there were defenders in the area. And Jacksonville had to punt this ball to get away. That was just strict sheer persistence from Ricky Robinson. Had to run all the way around to the other side of the, of the field, but he got to Bruin. And OJ takes the price from a lack of decisiveness. And the punt sails back to the nemesis. Fullerton on the return. Beats one defender and will be spotted at the 21. And just when Jacksonville's defense gets another hold, their de offense just shoots themselves in the foot again. Yeah. Can a defense make yeah. one more stand is the question. That's all it's going to take, but they just need some momentum on offense. It's been hard to come by tonight, and even when they have had it, they've made errors in key moments. Patak! Oh, oh that was another one! Almost Towers nearly had two! He did everything but catch the ball. He sat there and watched it come. Straight to him, got two hands on it, but reminded us why he's a cornerback and not a wide receiver. So you, speaking of offenses that have struggled, type attack has made tough work of this tonight. Pressure up the middle, Patak's gonna throw again. That's mm. tipped away, great pass coverage. And once again, Towers was involved. Andalus as well, involved and Jacksonville, plenty of coverage around the was, area now. Patak, it was Bancelo who actually yeah. got the tip. Yep. Five wide, if Seattle Truth on the right-hand side of the line. He's been the go-to on third down. Got a safety line up against a wide receiver. Let's see if they try to take advantage of it. Can he slide a junior motion from right to left? Patak drops back. Got one free, mm. it's too big. Jacksonville gets another hold. Patak wants that one back as he had a receiver wide open. Would have been an easy first down. They can just, they just cannot put this Jacksonville team away. They continue to fight. They're definitely making hard work of this one. Seattle, another punt coming straight away. That's our sixth in a row. Sent away, fielded at the 35 and returned up to the 38. It's a good starting field position here for the Kings. It is. Can they make the most of this opportunity is the question. So that's a good point made by Cameron Irvine in the game chat. We've seen three shutouts this season, unfortunately, to bring up Arizona have been shut out twice, but irrespective they're still well within the playoff hunt and we also saw denver it shut out once seattle on the verge of potentially doing it again look out oh bruin swallowed up great rush off the edge by darko young second down in 18 not the way you want to start this drive and why anyone would have a seven step drop in their playbook versus this seattle front four is beyond me there was a guy there, a blocker there, and he just did not see Darko Young at all. Had no idea what was happening. And now they've gone back eight yards. That's the absolute worst start they could have had in the situation. Bruin did go back to the air again. Pressure all over him. And that pass was not the worst out of the hands from OJ Bruin. The receiver didn't really know what to do with it. And now it's a third and a country mile. It was the pass rush again, got in his face and forced him to throw that ball a bit earlier than he wanted to. Another third down here for Bruin. Four wide, single and back is Vicari. again. Yep. Three two defense. The blitzer up the middle. Bruin a play fake. That was a good call, oh. but it's tipped away. Robinson with a key deflection. Three and out. The defense continues to step up and give you an opportunity, but they just have not been able to take advantage of the situation. It just wasn't. They, they looked okay last week offensively, Jacksonville, but they just haven't found their stride tonight at all. 
fair call at that time. That's a really good punt to spot them at the 20. Even those little wins are everything at the moment for Jacksonville. Seven of them yes. have a drive. Yeah, that's tough. There. And the only of those, and the only one out of those eight that wasn't a punt was a turnover. Yep. Bear Too wide to start off with. Yeah. I'll let you bring that thought back in after this opening play. Pro set, mm. handoff, blue Scott. And that picks up two. Bringing press off the edge. Ty read it right, but unfortunately, it only benefited him a gain of two yards. Just under six left in this contest. Three wide, four attack. John Martin signaling traffic at the inside linebacker spot. Short throw outside, but Blue Scott is going to pick up a couple. Good read by Roy Towers. He's had a good night tonight. I didn't get the number, but the receiver to Ty's right got great separation immediately off the line of scrimmage, but Ty missed him. Another third down opportunity for Jacksonville's defense to get a stop. And another three and out. Attack rolls back, zips it deep, mm. incomplete again. And look who it was on the deflection, none other than Roy Towers. Roy Towers had an excellent game tonight, and I believe that's Gus Scott's first drop of the game. Couldn't come mm -hmm. at a worse time for him. And just like that, the story repeats itself. Yes. And Seattle will punt it back to Jacksonville. Uh, fast running out of opportunities on offense tonight, the Kings. Fielded at the 32. Returned up. Here's Beasley. Almost got free. That could have been interesting. And he's going to roll forward and get to the 43. So that's a good result. Sits the much as shy of halfway. Best starting field position that Jacksonville has had in quite some time. Can he take advantage of it? Feel that this might be the best opportunity they'll get for the rest of the game. Yes. So important that you at least walk away with a field goal here on this possession. You don't necessarily need a touchdown right away. It would be nice to get it, but you feel if they can't get a field goal here on this position, it might be over and out. Again, heavy look up front from Seattle on defense. Pressure, oh. Vakarin ran straight into a bruising run from Shepard Vakarin, picks up five. The fullback had no one to block. He turned around to see if, if Vakarin was still behind him. <laughs> Man. Second and five, they're on the stroke of halfway. Offset eye to the short side. This looks as a better opportunity here for the run game for Jacksonville. There'll be a handoff up the middle to the fullback in Ben Harrison. Tight Pick end, up a couple. Yeah. A tight end, rather. Good call. That makes it third and short. Third and manageable. They don't have a contract fullback, so he is the fullback despite being listed as a tight end. Seen that a lot around the league. Handoff, short side. Bakarian, they needed that. He's got the first down. Keeps it rolling. The last time they were in this, they were third and four and they ran it with Vakari. And this time it's third and three. They do the same thing. And like I said, pregame, that's their best chance to win this game is to feed him early and often. He hasn't done much wrong tonight, Shepard Vakari. And given the amount of attention this defense has given him, Sean Sanders has got a four-yard pickup that time wrapped up by Doug Day. That makes second and medium. A little interesting, opens the playable cup a bit. If Doug Day does not make that tackle, they're still running the football right now because there was everyone mm -hmm. behind him was blocked up. Good and job. Being Doug. a one-on-one. -on -one. Same formation, same result. It's a handoff to Harrison up the middle, and that's gonna get them close to first down yardage. And what I like about that is slowing the game down. They're trying mm -hmm. to score a touchdown and leave type attack as little time as possible to do something about it. 
Look at this front, 4-4 defense again. Same formation, same play. Oh. Harrison stuffed! Doug he got Day. half a yard, but that's not enough. And Doug Day in on the stop. Now, Eddie, field goal range for Jordan Bradshaw, you would you imagine, go but they're going for it. Yeah, I agree. I, that, that thought just came to mind. So now they've got 4-4 four, four at the front for Karin in the backfield. Heavy set versus heavy set. Vakarian, short side, got it! Mm. Shepard Vakarian, clutch! Silence is the crowd. This crowd was on their feet yelling defense. Mm -hmm. He crossed the first down marker and they all sat back down. He gets up and points and says, shh, not yet. That's a huge play. Pro set, offset eye. The animation in Copeland outside. Defense. Most of this drive Man. Seattle has. They are bringing pressure. Sanders outside trying to get the speed. Oh, he almost broke free. A hit from behind prevented him from breaking that off for real from Aaron Gooden. Yeah, Aaron Gooden was on a blitz. He blitzed out wide, turned around, and recognized the run play, and made the tackle four yards downfield. Two minute warning, all of a sudden we're in for a grandstand finish. Jacksonville driving to potentially take the lead for the first time tonight. See there again, the, the team stats are all borderline identical. Both teams just haven't executed when they've gotten into this kind of range. Can Jacksonville do it when it matters most? Connor West is up top with a huge amount of space. Yeah. About 15 yards off the ball. My wow. Goodness. Corners are playing right back. Handoff though will go to Vakarian and Shepard Vakarian picks up a first down. Now at this point, it's first down Jacksonville. They're about maybe 18 yards from the end zone. And should they continue to have success running the football, Seattle may think about calling some timeouts. Certainly gonna come the type of tax mind at this point. 4-4 defense again from Seattle with a fresh set of downs for the Kings. Hand off at the middle. It's Sean Sanders trying to get some room. Picks up three, that's fine in the context of things here. Keeps the clock rolling. They've been running a ball up the A-gap pretty much every play of this drive with the exception of the first down run. Just giving what the defense is giving them at the moment. Free wide, Bruin, the first throw. Oh. oh, Weston, that's an unlikely error. If Connor Weston catches that ball, he's gonna turn up field and pick up the first down. It's gonna be first and goal. That's a big drop. Wow. Once again, this is a huge moment. Third and seven. Bruin, and the, four the wide. Is coming. This is where they got in trouble there all afternoon. Seen this a number of times from Seattle's defense. Motion receiver is Beasley. Look out. Bruin, sacked. There it is. Right on cue. Aaron Steen again. Third and long has been the detriment of this Jacksonville offense all game long. I don't, I'm not sure the last time I've seen Seattle do anything but blitz from the strong side, and O.J. Bruin has not handled it well. Fourth and 12, they got to go for it. Darko Young, second of the night, could be a game winner. I've got to get through blitzing. one more play here, Seattle. It's the same play on defense. Blitz sure. came incomplete. Tipped away from Brian James. And that might be the game. It just might be. Jacksonville has all three timeouts left. It's just under a minute of play. So I assume that Tab Attack is going to try to run this clock out. And wow, third and long has just been that detriment all game long today. They bring out that 3 2 dime look and they bring the outside linebacker down into the box as a blitzer and that has worked a charm for them on three third down offense and it might just be enough for the nemesis to get home with one of their more uglier wins of the season but they all count they don't care get it how you they're can trying to keep pace with the pacific division with san diego but most likely picking up a win in the other side of the block tonight hand off up the middle trying to get room was 
Baloo Scott, and that will be the first of three timeouts called by Jacksonville. First of three timeouts, and if Jacksonville has any chance of winning this game, they've got to force a punt. One first down here in Anitoba. That's the... There you go. We're looking at a score, Agami. <laughs> what do you know? It's a season that's had everything. Patak outside run. Here's Baloo Scott. That's going to be short of the first down marker. So the second to two, so a second time out from Jacksonville called. And now they got one more. Baloo had great blocking at the point of attack. And Jacksonville did a great job of closing that hole up. That looked bleak. You got to get through this one here. Jacksonville needs I'll be throwing everyone at the box at this point. They got 4 3 defense upcoming. Patak, hand off at the middle. Blue Scott, that's the first down, and she's going to break it off. That's the ball game. Seattle are going to walk out of here with a win. Blue Scott picks up the first down, gets up, yells at the, at the Rookies crowd, thanks for coming, good night, and drive home safe because that's a win. And just a Seattle lock up there, win here at home. We'll get a final game update from San Diego. Thank you, Jacob. Had to show you this pink Lisa with the interception late in this one. Looked like she had her first pick six in hand, but LA's going to tackle her at the half yard line to take it away from oh. her. But San Diego scores 35 unanswered in the second half and beats LA 41-24. Back to you. I reckon Eddie would have cried if we had two pick sixes in a, pick sixes in a <laughs> same game. <laughs> that sounds unbelievable. I'm just, I'm, I'm just content that it's just not going to happen for me. <laughs> You're not going to shake that joke for as long as you can use that line. No. As it is, Seattle walks out of here with an important win at home to keep pace in the set Pacific Division. Jacksonville falls to two and nine. Eddie Gage, your thoughts on the action we just saw? It was an important win for Seattle indeed, as it's the last game of their three-game homestand. They did not want to leave out of here one and two on a homestand. They fight off Jacksonville and that vaunted defense throughout the most of this game. They were able to score those two field goals early, but that was it. Seattle's offense had to withstand the pressure that Jacksonville put on them all game long from that front seven. Put a lot of pressure on Ty, but he made the plays when he had to, and it was just enough to win the game. But Jacksonville, they've got to find a way to reel O.J. Bruin in. They gave him help with the running game, but when he was asked to pass, particularly in third and long situations, they just did not have enough versatility in their offense to keep Seattle guessing. They kept bringing the same blitz all game long, and they just did not have enough adjustments to make up the difference. That's it for us tonight. Thank you to... Uh, Justin Reside and Top Kiefer in the stats truck. Don't go anywhere tomorrow night. The usual Monday night spectacular, 7.15 p.m. Eastern. Mike and Cam will recap this week in the SFL, followed by Charleston hosting Queen City at the 8.15 p.m. Monday night football game. We'll see you then, and thank you for tuning in tonight. Congratulations to Seattle on the win. Arizona, I love y'all. Man, we needed that win, y'all. I could not believe he was even that close, but shout out to Portland for making it a game. But it is not getting any easier. We got Minnesota next week. Let's go get it.